No wait weather and traffic wants you to be prepared this hurricane season. We're not here to scare you and hype every storm. Our number one priority is to keep you informed and safe. Before, during, and after a storm, weather, it's what we do. No wait weather and traffic, weekdays 5.30 to 9.30 on CW39 Houston. Devastating storm smashes into Louisiana. Whoa! Hopefully FEMA can help us because right now we have nothing. The residents here are suffering, they're struggling, and the supplies and resources are limited. Our Gulf Coast family in need. Our street is totally flooded. I have never experienced anything like this before. It was the scariest night of my life. The only way to get through this is with your neighbors. Is that Louisiana strong? That is Louisiana strong. The impact of Ida on one of our own. It's been one month since major Hurricane Ida slammed into our neighbors along the Louisiana coast. Our own CW39 meteorologist Kerrigan Chauvin calls the Bayou Towns in southeast Louisiana home. Kerrigan headed home in the wake of the hurricane to tell the stories of the community she loves so much. Well, you know, Adam, Southeast Louisiana is no stranger to hurricanes, but each storm is unique and brings with it its own set of issues. Ida was no different. And while I went home for work, I also went home to see my family and my community. All right, and Kerrigan, you'll have those stories for us coming up in just a minute. First, though, we wanted to check in on how things are going right now. There are still thousands of people without power. Our sister station in New Orleans felt the force of the storm firsthand as Ida damaged their building while the team was working through the storm. All right, Hank, take me back to that day when Ida was making landfall. What was it like to be in the middle of your coverage and your building was taking on damage at that time? Uh, it was a wild experience to say the least. Uh, some people were certainly a little bit more freaked out than others in the building. Uh, you know, I myself was in the middle of our actual on air coverage with our two main anchors. We had rain pouring into the actual newsroom, so people were, you know, taking videos of that. I know we had some people really concerned off into the distance, so there were a few people crying. I mean, there's a lot of emotions, obviously. Uh, here in the weather center, which is just sort of off camera from our studio, just very loud banging. So something had come loose. You know, we didn't know what uh, really, but uh, you could hear something banging against the wall. So you just hope that uh, that didn't come through, whatever it was. And then, you know, we started getting some video from outside after a little while. And you saw some uh, some of the outside panels ripped off. There was a corner of uh, the station here that. Uh, you know, one of the walls sort of caved in a little bit. Yeah. It was a wild time. I've never experienced anything like it, that's for sure. And you're in a sturdy structure. Not everyone in Louisiana can say that. So how concerned were you for your viewers and the people that you serve in your area that they were going to be okay during this? Well, I mean, you know, as you know, you tell people to get out of certain areas and they don't. I mean, that's just the way it is, and that's probably the way it's always going to be. So those areas to the southwest, and that's why I have that image pulled up from about 1030 that Sunday morning, that's Lafouche and Terrebonne Parish right there as that eye was coming into that area. I mean, we pretty much knew that that was going to be uh, basically wiped out and mostly total devastation probably in that area because it was so, so close to the eye wall and the winds were going to be so strong. So we were trying to really hammer home for those people to get out. More from our conversation with Hank coming up a little bit later on in the show. Now, Kerrigan, you were born and raised in southeast Louisiana, but many people are only familiar with New Orleans and the towns right along Interstate 10. Walk us through the vibrant community that calls South of 10 home. Yeah, believe it or not, there's life south of I-10, and many of us are familiar with I-10. It runs from Houston all the way into New Orleans. So about five hours later, whenever you get there, you're going to have to go south. Yes, I'm talking south here, where you'll find towns like Thibodeau, Raceland, Homa, and my hometown of Chauvin, Louisiana, where it's Ida really brought the worst of the worst of it. Check out its track passing right over Chauvin here. And even with sustained winds of over 150 miles per hour and peak gusts of over 170 miles an hour, many people in my hometown rode out the storm. That meant seeing the worst damage firsthand right after the storm passed. As soon as I could, I headed home to check on my family and see the damage to my community. 
Welcome to the Bayou Towns. The population is small, but hearts here are big. It's very sad and disheartening, um, but then looking around at all of your neighbors too and knowing that they're all going through the exact same thing, I think that's even harder. Like, it's not just you, it's everyone else as well. Everyone losing so much. This place received some of the worst devastation from Hurricane Ida. It was pretty rough. Uh, in my party room, though, it wasn't that bad. It didn't seem that bad, but uh, it was rough. We're debating whether we were going to leave or not, but we've been through a lot of storms before in the past, like Andrew, Gustav, uh, Katrina, and we never uh, evacuated. So a little hard head, or what we call down here, Ted Diz, you know. People are looking forward to recovery, something I learned all too well growing up here. We spoke with residents and most importantly, family. <laughs> <I'm cry. laughs> In Chauvin, my childhood bus driver, Nancy Crochet, is struggling to find solutions. Hopefully FEMA can help us because we have no insurance. Uh, I'm still working and my husband's disabled. And the only, the only thing we can do is rely on FEMA because right now we have nothing. We can also rely on each other, the Louisiana way. Local and popular social media star DJ Rhett is known for lifting spirits with a Cajun twist. But is it too soon to make light of the damage? No, I don't, I don't think it's too soon. I got a lot of ideas going on, like now I got to bathe out of my uh, sugar kettle. You know, uh, I got four days of Ida Funk on me. I'm just telling you, and it's going to, I'm going to have a new song called Not Uptown Funk, it's going to be called Ida Funk. And I try to make light of it, but just seeing everybody and everybody coming in and reaching out, it's, it's, it means a lot to us in the community. Tiny but mighty, Chauvin, Homa, Berg, Montague are all resilient, caring, and determined to come out stronger, a place I'm proud to call home. We're going to bounce back. It's going to take time and help because when you got a low-income family that, you know, you got to work. Oh, we'll recover. recover. We're going to fight the fight, and we're going to make it happen. One day, one day at a time, that's all we can do. Now, at the end there, Kerrigan, we saw you hugging your dad. It was a very special moment. Tell me what that was like. Yeah, emotions were obviously running pretty high. It's, it's a unique perspective uh, going into this situation, being a meteorologist as well, because I'm forecasting for this event. I know the impacts and the damage that was to come out of this. And finally, just getting able to see them for the first time there. One of the hardest things after the storm is that communication was hard to come by. So I had no way of letting them know that I, that I was going to be there reporting on the damage, reporting on the storm in my own hometown. But you know how small towns are. They heard through the grapevine, people, people talked and they, they knew I was on my way there. Um, like you heard in the video there, my mom says, we're, we were waiting for you. So finally just getting able to see them, to hug them, to know that they were okay, because that was a thing too. I didn't know if they were okay or not. I hadn't heard from them since landfall that Sunday night. And honestly, that moment was very relieving for me as well, because we were here in the studio forecasting this, and I was so concerned for you, your family, knowing where the storm was going. Uh, so we love to see that moment there with your family. And of course, the recovery from Ida is just beginning. season of Judge Mathis. Let's get real. The Judge Mathis is gonna give it to you. Next on CW39, Houston. At Kroger, we know that the slower a banana ripens, the longer it stays fresh. So we keep things fresher than fresh by ripening them slowly. Prank calls. The Rule and Ryan Show. And all your favorite songs. All the biggest hits. KRB is my station. Houston's number one hit music.
Music Station. 104.1 KRBE. There's no sort of self-awareness going on in the media. I'm going to have a guest on. We can have a civil conversation. They can say, I don't agree with him, but I appreciate that he told me. And I think that's going to help. The Rooms to Go 12-Day Fall Sale starts Thursday. Just 12 days to get the beautiful furniture you want, save lots of money, and finance interest-free for 60 months. So hurry in. Get amazing fall sale savings on stylish living rooms, bedrooms, dining rooms, mattresses, kids' rooms, and more. Yes, at Rooms to Go, you get both. Great sale prices and 60-month interest-free financing at the Rooms to Go 12-Day Fall Sale, starting Thursday. Let's go. Introducing Assurance Wireless Unlimited. If you qualify for the federal government's temporary emergency broadband benefit, you'll get a free smartphone, free unlimited data, free unlimited texts, free unlimited minutes, plus 10 gigabytes of free hotspot data, all free for a limited time. See if you qualify at assurancewireless.com slash unlimited. Apply now. What makes new Salon Pass Arthritis Gel so good for arthritis pain? Salon Pass contains the most prescribed topical pain relief ingredient. It's clinically proven, reduces inflammation, and comes in original prescription strength. Salon Pass, it's good medicine. How do we make sure Kroger food is fresh? We put sensors on our coolers, and if something changes, we drop whatever we're doing to take care of it. That way, we can make sure Kroger food isn't just fresh, it's fresher than fresh. Finally got water after three days, I think it was yesterday or the day before yesterday. I'm lost on my days. Uh, it's... It was so nice to take a bath. <laughs> that felt so good. We continue to share stories about the devastation across South Louisiana after the landfall of Hurricane Ida. Families are still struggling with many unknowns, and the uncertainty can be difficult for all of us, but as a parent, I know it can be especially tough for children, particularly those with special needs. Here is another hometown story from my travels post-Hurricane Ida. This is his room. This is his normal. Hugh is three years old, full of life, cute as a button, and a Hurricane Ida survivor. He is my godchild and son to Lindsay LeBlanc. He also has autism spectrum disorder. In the room that you guys probably saw that I fell out is his playroom and he has an everyday routine. His normal that he functions within every single day has been disrupted. Parenting during a catastrophic hurricane can be hard enough on its own. But when your child involves a little extra care and preparation, it can make tough times tougher. Southeast Texas is prone to hurricanes and natural disasters, just like our friends in Louisiana. Tyrell is a board certified behavioral analyst and certified special educator at the Lilly Center. Your child may not experience that natural disaster in the same way that a typically developing child would. It's even more essential that you are, that you are prepared. So you wanna make sure you have all the prescriptions, medical supplies you need, but you know, the, the particular blanket at a shelter may not work for your child because they may have sensory defensiveness or, um, you know, it may be too scratchy, whatever that is. Pack those things. If you know that your child will only eat a certain texture and a certain color of food, then you may want to prepare those things. Now it's going to go through the cones. Ready, Caroline? Grab it. Tyrell says it may be worth your while to evacuate if you have the resources to do so, even if it's not recommended for everyone, because your experience and your child's experience could be that much more traumatic. It's hard, but I feel like you just figure it out. We're going to try to leave and get him someplace safer that's going to be a little bit more manageable for him. At the end of the day, effectively communicating with your child is the most important. You want to relay the seriousness of the situation without invoking any type of fear or anxiety. I have much more information from Tyrell on our website at CW39.com. 
and many families whose homes were destroyed by Hurricane Ida are using their boats for shelter while they rebuild. While growing up in Chauvin, boats were a big part of my life during hurricane season. When I went home to see the aftermath of Ida, our family shrimp boat was damaged from the storm, but still afloat. A smooth sea never made a skilled sailor or trawler. Shrimp boats that line the bayou are damaged, but still afloat after Hurricane Ida. Oh, we have Loran plotters, uh, GPS. The major hurricane force winds completely destroyed homes in bayou towns like Chauvin. Now residents are forced to seek shelter elsewhere until they are able to rebuild. Oh, this part got it bad. I'll pass that up with some foam and put everything fixed up the best I could. And then we can try to go back to work. Although it's not ideal, many do have a secondary place to stay. Small cabins on the waters of Bayou Piti Caillou will provide a roof over their heads. This is my dad, Carrie Chauvin. <laughs> I dressed up for you. Daddy's always like this. <laughs> I've been like this for a few couple of days. Oh, <laughs> Growing up, we endured every storm on this boat, named after my mom, the Lady Melissa. Here's what it looked like before the storm. Ida's scenario was different. They stayed in the house. But if the tide would have came up, we would have had to come on a boat. So good chance that the, the levee system held. This time, it was the wind that brought the damage. When the wind was blowing, it was blowing pretty hard. We had all the electronics really got soaked in here. So very few was salvageable. It blew out the windows, and we bent the outriggers. And there's a damage to the side of the boat that we got to repair. But uh, we can do it. We'll, we'll fix it up. We won't give up. Well, Kerrigan, that family boat has been through a lot, hasn't it? It sure has, and it's put me through a lot as well, because growing up, I spent every single hurricane on that boat, video camera in hand. Um, I guess that's how I got my love for the weather, my interest in the weather growing up. But that uh, boat played a big role in my parents' life during Hurricane Andrew. So at my age, my dad built that boat by himself mm -hmm. with his own hands. And um, four months later, after the boat was built, that's whenever Hurricane Andrew hit and it completely destroyed, ripped apart the trailer they were living in at the time. And the boat was their home for the next six months while they had to rebuild uh, from the ground up in the house that we live in to this day. Mm -hmm. So that was their home, boats becoming homes, all too common yeah. in South Louisiana. Well, and the boat lives on, and we heard at the end of the story there, the very positive attitude your yeah. dad had. I'm sure he'll be able to, to fix it up, and uh, it'll be good to go for years to come. It'll be good to go for the next hurricane season. He, he always told me that water was the biggest concern where we're from, so close to the Gulf, the water rises, and if you're on the boat, you just rise right along with the tide. Yeah, that's the way to do it. Thank you for sharing that personal Thank story you. with us. Spokesperson for Jim Adler. People say Jim Adler is loud. I won't be quiet when you've been injured. People say Jim Adler is angry. I'll never let the insurance company teach you. People say Jim Adler is the hammer. Well, I am. I'm Jim Adler, the Texas Hammer. An 18-wheeler struck my client. I got him $1.7 million in his pocket. He doesn't care what people say. I care about getting you every penny you need. Call now. To the tooth grinders, the ice chewers, and the bottle openers, you are welcome here. At Jefferson Dental and Orthodontics, we get it. Life happens, and your teeth take a beating. We're here to meet you where you are, which means using cutting edge technology to show you exactly what's going on in your mouth. It doesn't matter if your last dentist appointment was months ago or a decade ago. All smiles are welcome here, not just the perfect ones. Call 800-440-6495 to schedule your appointment today. Oh, just one. Jake from State Farm, it's the least I can do. You really did me a solid with that uh, Maya markdown on my insurance. Here's the deal, Maya. State Farm offers everyone surprisingly great rates. <gasps> right. No, really, there are no markdowns, just great rates. Pull around back in 20 minutes. I'll hook you up with the good parts. 
When you want the real deal, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Adam Miller, the Texas Bulldog. He absolutely he knows the law inside out. He knows what he's doing. I would recommend him to my family and friends. Are you tired of fighting the insurance companies? Call Adam Miller, the Texas Bulldog, now. It was a phenomenal experience just out of this world. Uh, he's really down to earth. He listens to you, and uh, he, he really fights for you. Call 713-572-3333. Because we don't just bark, we bite. <laughs> It's Empire Today's biggest sale, the 50-50-50 sale. 50% off carpet and flooring, 50% off padding and materials, and 50% off installation. That's right, half off your entire project. You can save thousands. Empire's 50-50-50 sale won't last long. Don't miss 50% off carpet and flooring, 50% off padding and materials, and 50% off installation. 800-588-2300, Empire Today. I was exploring dimensional kinematics. Admit it, he's adopted. How can I be adopted when I have a twin sister? Think, monkey. Think. Young Sheldon, tonight at 6 and 6.30 on CW39. Houston. I got roof damage. My upstairs is gone. My husband's shed was in the back of... It was a shed. It's not there no more. But then we ride around to see some of these other people. It's a whole lot worse than we are. After the devastation Ida brought to my hometown, I would like to believe that everyone was honest and willing to do anything to help. Sadly, I was informed that wasn't the case. Reports of crime started to increase in the days following landfall. We have several extra deputies on the streets day and night to protect the people and property from those criminals who will try to take advantage of people who have already lost so much. After any natural disaster, necessary supplies like fuel, food, water, and generators are scarce. Tools to repair your own home are hard to come by. Tarps were one of the most needed commodities post-Hurricane Ida, as most homes in the river parishes suffered extensive roof damage. Out-of-towners and business owners picked up on this problem. Some came in having good intentions, and others not so much. Major Terry Degree says that contractor fraud and looting were two of the most common crimes after the storm. We have arrested over 20 people for looting we will continue our focus in this direction. The sheriff's office had suffered damage to the buildings and equipment, just like everyone else. They worked through the storm and the aftermath, continually serving the community to the best of their ability. Local and out-of-state contractors are working relentlessly to rebuild homes. Most are honest, but Major Terry warns of cases that have been reported for contractor fraud. Be extra cautious if a roofing company is from far outside your area, not found online, or if they request payment up front. Most charged by square feet. You should know the measurements of your roof beforehand so you know if you're being charged correctly. According to the Better Business Bureau, price gouging is a term referred to when a seller spikes the price of goods or services to a level much higher than considered reasonable. They recommend being as specific about the transaction as possible, gather together all documentation, compare pricing of similar products with other sellers in the area, and it is important to note that after a disaster, naturally costs are going to rise slightly due to an increase in transportation costs, lack of labor, supplies, However, this increase in price should not be extreme, unreasonable, or exponential. That is when you should report an incident. Anyone needing to report criminal activity is asked to call the sheriff's office. We are here to serve you. For more information on reporting criminal activity after a severe storm, go to our website, cw39.com. Now the focus is on the continued recovery for Louisiana following Ida. Adam spoke with meteorologist Hank Allen in New Orleans about this process. 
And let's talk about recovery now, because obviously Ida is not the only big storm to hit Louisiana. You've had several in the last couple of years. How hard is it to recover yeah. when these storms just keep coming and coming one right after the other? You know, when you get a storm of this magnitude that comes in, I mean, it is a months, if not years long recovery process. And so some areas that are down along the immediate coast that get flooded all the time, I mean, they have to rebuild all the time. Of course, there's a lot of areas, though, with this system inland that you know, there are a ton of trees down, and if you drive around any of these communities really in southeast Louisiana, you just see just stacks of, uh, I guess for lack of a better word, vegetative debris uh, just piled up on the road. I mean, large tree trunks, tree limbs, tree branches. I've got some in front of my house, as a matter of fact. We had four trees down in my yard, so there's just so much debris around the area where, you know, you're just sort of waiting on these crews to come around and pick it all up, and that takes uh, months in and of itself. And then you know, when there's so many people that have insurance claims and damage, I mean, it's just going to be such a long process to, you know, try to get the, the manpower, the contractors to come back, uh, the insurance claims filtered through to get the money to do this sort of thing. And so, you know, some areas are going to be probably this time next year uh, waiting to get back to normal. Would you say we're at the point of the season now where we can relax or can we ever relax? How on guard do we need to be going forward now? You know, I don't want to write it off, obviously. We usually, at least around here, we wait till mid-October before you sort of, you know, start to breathe a sigh of relief. That didn't work last year, obviously. But I just have a feeling that this year doesn't necessarily have that flurry of activity towards the end of it that last season had. But, you know, as you know, you got to keep watching through probably early November at this point just to be safe. Uh, hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. Always a good thing <laughs> to keep in mind for hurricane season. Hank, we appreciate the time. Thank you. All right, thanks for having me. All right. So Kerrigan, one of the themes we saw over and over in your stories was resiliency in Louisiana. But I think no matter how resilient everyone there is, they still need help, whether it's a month after the storm, six months, or even beyond that. What are some of the ways people can help now and going forward? I think one of the biggest things that we really need now are supplies and building supplies in general uh, because we're wanting to rebuild. We're wanting to better ourselves, our homes, and our town. But we need the things to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. So it's not the food and water. Some people might think that right after the storm, but now it's more so around yeah, rebuilding. Definitely. Yeah. All right, and if you're seeing this and you want to help out for a list of ways you can do that, head to our website, CW39.com.